your social life can completely go down the drain. The next one is very close to home. I absolutely hated anatomy. It saves me so much time. They couldn't be more different. One of the most important things about medical school that I've learned during my time. my loves and welcome back to my channel so recently I've been getting so many questions all about medical school revision my top tips and just my own experience now I've finally made it into my clinical years so I thought I would do a little sit down video and answer all of your questions however if there is anything that I miss out at all or any questions that you want to know make sure you stick a comment in the description box below so I can get back to you or anyone else that has any advice too so we can basically just use this video as a full medical school guide to give you all the tips and secrets that are to know to get through it but most importantly enjoy the journey along the way for those of you who don't know me or who are new here then hi I'm Anna I'm in my third year at Birmingham Medical School I'm also on the MedSoc committee this year I'm sponsorship rep hence why I'm wearing my Birmingham MedSoc fleece I thought I've got to show off the stash in the video also right now I'm going to apologize for this horrible lighting I'm using the natural daylight so it keeps changing because I haven't brought my ring lights to university yet because I've been in denial about it getting darker but anyway I headed over to my Instagram to get all of your questions and make sure you're following me over there so you can participate in videos like this but I've written down all the most popular ones and the most interesting ones too so the first question was what is the biggest difference about first and second year and third year and at Birmingham Medical School and a lot of different medical schools as well we basically have pre-clinical years which are first and second year and then third fourth and fifth year are called clinical years where you're basically mainly just on a placement at a hospital and to be completely honest they couldn't be more different they are polar opposites and it basically goes from more of a university style of teaching to a working style and kind of learning on the job and learning skills which I am enjoying so much more the second biggest difference for me is definitely how much more independent your clinical years are for us anyway our first couple of years are basically a nine-to-five with loads of different lectures small group teachings set work that you need to do whereas clinical years is so independent at the beginning of the year you're given a full list of skills like taking bloods taking observations which you need to get signed off a certain amount of times throughout the year and then also loads and loads of lectures with all the different conditions again to work through and then the hospital itself does give you some teaching on the side as well this really nicely brings me on to the next question which is what is your third year stroke clinical year timetable and structure so a lot of it does depend what placement and hospital you're at and we get given two different placements for the year so we're on one now and then we change it to a different one after Christmas and we are there four times a week and then Friday is either our statistics module GP or we have these GP in days which cover different themes each time whilst we're in the hospital where I am anyway we rotate disciplines every two weeks so for instance the last couple of weeks I've been on liver and I've just changed on to upper and lower gastro surgery so for me that's been a really nice way of breaking through the lectures and covering them whilst I'm on that rotation in the hospital just to make sure I'm keeping up with everything and it's also really nice to be able to see the lectures applicable in real life and match what I'm doing in the lectures to what I'm seeing on placement and then within those rotations we have a different set teaching which can either be clinics ward rounds consultant teaching we also have CTFs which look after our firms which are the small groups that we're split into on placement of sick we also have ACTS which are another form of doctor teachers that do different things with us we also have a SAT which is a consultant which again runs different teachings each week and then we also have a junior doctor teaching scheme and they again go through different things every week with us so it can be a lot of different things to coordinate and get your head around because a lot of the teaching you have to organize yourself and just in terms of exams in comparison to first and second year where we had two big sets of exams 50% in January and then another 50% in May for two years this year is the first year where we don't have that big set in January actually have an exam just before Christmas for our statistics module and then we have a huge huge MCQ at the end of the year on 
all the different conditions and everything we've learned all year along with oskies and that is at the start of may now the next question is do i wear makeup every day to placement and what is my everyday makeup routine and i love this question because i've always been obsessed with beauty and makeup and making sure that i still incorporate that side of me into becoming a doctor and medical school but the quick answer is no by no means do i wear makeup every single day you'll find with me i'm very black and white i either do my whole everyday makeup routine which takes me about 10-15 minutes or I just about manage to brush my hair get some clothes on and get out the door however the days where I do wear makeup it really doesn't take me very long to do this face and weirdly I feel more productive before I even walk out the door knowing that I've managed to really put myself together for the day and I'll quickly show you some of my absolute must-have beauty products which also so excitingly brings me on to today's video sponsor which is somehow look fantastic who I've always been absolutely obsessed with they are my go-to place to get all of my beauty staples really quick really easy and I also have a discount code for you all which I will put on the screen here and also in the description box so you can get yourself all of my favorite products for a discounted rate first of all two things that i use every single day even if i am feeling super lazy is my ren moisturizer now ren is my favorite skincare brand without fail i've been using them for years and looking after your skin is really important to me and just makes me feel so much better and then i also always go in with a lip moisturizer now i've tried every single lip product out there and this is my absolute favorite it's the grapefruit flavor and guys you need this during the winter to stop you getting chap lips. It smells absolutely amazing. And the formula is just so rich and so nourishing for your lips. Then another absolute staple of mine is this Wedwellida. I never know how to say this, but this skin food in the light is so good for everyday makeup. I love the other one for going out. However, this one on an everyday basis just gives you that really healthy glow without being too much. Brows are another thing that I love to do every day. And this again has taken me years to find but the NYX Micro Brow Pencil is the best thing out there. I've tried lots of more expensive ones, but this is honestly amazing. Super thin and puts just the right amount onto your brows. So when you're doing them, when you're really tired in the morning, they don't look too dark, but equally give that little pop to them. Another staple is my Too Faced Concealer. Now, without concealer, I do always feel like I look a little bit tired. Unfortunately, a side effect to medical school is you always do look a little bit tired, no matter how much sleep you've got. So just to cover them up and also... If I do have any blemishes and to put concealer on or foundation on days where I'm wearing it I always use beauty blenders and I just think they give the most flawless look with the most minimal effort because that's what we want think speedy time efficient but looks good and beauty blenders are perfect for making sure you've actually put your makeup on evenly in the morning now this little pack from look fantastic is perfect and would make such a good little christmas gift or secret santa because they are a bit more on the pricey side and getting new ones is always a treat and then again something that's been in my makeup bag for centuries at this point is the urban decay all nighter spray you need to set it else literally an hour in it's going to be off your face and on your face mask and this just makes everything last forever now a trick i've never heard anyone talk about but saves me so much time in the morning is keeping all of your everyday makeup in a separate little makeup bag now I have all of my makeup shoved in a drawer but organizing just the bits that I use for my everyday routine means I can just grab them out and use them first thing in the morning without having to sift through all of my makeup to find them and I also do the same with my makeup brushes and these are the cutest things in the entire world I absolutely love the pattern on them and best of all they also lie flat on your desk so you can seal your makeup those are just a few of my favorite products in my everyday makeup routine if you do want to see a whole tutorial or even like a youtube short or something make sure to comment it below and i will definitely make that for you all of the products will be linked below so make sure you get your hands on some of these amazing products so the next question i get a lot and that is how do you get up so early every day and my biggest tip for this is to 
we get into the habit of the alarm goes off, you get out of bed. You're not snoozing it. You're not lying in bed for another half an hour because trust me, if I let my body do that, I probably wouldn't end up getting out of bed either. Also having some part of your morning routine that you look forward to is so important to me as well. Mine is half an hour, having my breakfast, having my overnight oats, which we all know I'm obsessed with, and I am a big foodie. So for me, having breakfast and starting the day with a coffee, chilled watching a bit of YouTube, is worth getting out of bed for and setting my alarm that little bit earlier to just make sure I have a relaxing start to the day. Yours might be going on a walk outside or making yourself a nice pumpkin spice latte from home, or even staying in bed for 15 minutes and reading your book. I really do think the first first hour of waking up is so crucial to set the tone for the rest of the day and just put you in a more positive mood and achieve more. Next is my go-to lunches for placement and if you've watched any of my vlogs you will know that every single Sunday I meal prep all of my lunches for the week so I make five little pack boxes to just grab out of the fridge. It's so much easier than having to faff around the night before even the morning of going to hospital and because I eat mainly vegan it tends to be some sort of tofu, chickpea, peanut butter stir fry or salad and it has been mainly cold however now we've got a microwave in our common room and it's getting a lot chillier outside I'm gonna start to think about making chilies or soup but this little video here has loads of my favorite recipes but I'd also love to make a new one of what I eat in a week as a student because I'm obsessed with cooking and coming up with healthy high protein affordable meals for students now I had a lot of questions about how I revise for anatomy and my biggest tips for anatomy and to be honest for the first year I absolutely hated anatomy it took me so long to find a style that did work for me what I wish someone had told me earlier is it is such a visual topic unlike different modules in medicine anatomy you really need to learn by seeing it atlases like complete anatomy are amazing at being able to visualize the entire human body and just really get your head around where everything comes from during very simple diagrams from resources like complete anatomy it's also something that I wish I did way sooner before I got too hecked up with all the tiny little details it's something where you really need to make sure you know all the basics so all the main arteries and main veins main muscles and then build and build and build layers upon that and then my two favorite life-saving resources are teach me anatomy and Ken hubs they just simplify everything so much and make it seem so much easier than really thick text Experts. and making lots of different decks of flashcards from those is the method that ended up working best for me. The next one is very close to home and that is do you feel like you miss out on your social life due to workload or does it not have much of an effect? Now I definitely do look back on my first couple of years and wish I had prioritised more time for my social life and not working myself to the very bone. Now there were lots of different factors to that because I started medical school in COVID so it wasn't that easy easy to actually socialize anyway. I just threw myself into work 110%, but that very quickly does lead to burnout. Now, one of the most important things about medical school that I've learned during my time is that the workload is literally up here. There is always gonna be more you could be doing, you're always gonna feel behind, and there's also always gonna be other medical students way ahead of you, but also, on the other spectrum, there's also going to be people way behind you and it's just getting your head around that fact. At sixth form, to be completely honest, I was always a little bit ahead of the curriculum, felt really organised with my revision and hated that feeling of being even remotely behind. Whereas at medical school, you kind of have to get used to it and learn that prioritising seeing your friends and your social life is as important as work. And for me, this came to a forefront during my end of second year exams where I'd got myself so tired wasn't happy, wasn't seeing my friends, and then I just didn't have the energy to put 110% into a revision season like I normally do, and I feel like I ended up doing worse off than if I just made sure that I was still seeing my friends throughout the year and actually enjoying everything that is at medical school. This year, I'm so much happier for still prioritizing all the things that I enjoy and still going out with my friends, and it just makes you a much more balanced person. Yes, very, very easily, your social life can completely 
completely go down the drain with medical school because of the huge workload of the course itself but also all the extra things that you could be doing research you can be participating in extra little details you can learn about all of the conditions you can very easily feel like you haven't got the time to have a social life but that is what it's all about making sure that you balance the both of them and prioritize them both as equals schedule your time with your friends as you would schedule going to a lecture and this is supposed to be the fun part before we have any real responsibilities and just make sure you enjoy your time at medical school too and the last question that I'm going to answer for today is my biggest revision tips for medical school and I do feel like I've done a lot of exam seasons at this point and picked up a lot of crucial tips and first of all is to start earlier than you think even if that is doing 10 minutes and a tiny little bit every single day or just organizing how you're going to do your revision the earlier you start the less panicked you're going to get before your exams and it also means that you don't have to cram and can use proper spaced repetition which is the key to medical school and getting that amount into your brain you want to recap things over a certain amount of time to make sure they don't fall off the forgetting curve and it just makes it a way more manageable amount to deal with also linked to that before you even start properly learning the content come up with a rough revision timetable and plan it to how you're going to get through this amount of content before your exam date. Now for me something that is crucial is having all of my revision resources actually made before it even comes to revising and I personally don't make any notes and instead make all Anki flashcards as I do the lectures and as I go throughout the year so when it comes to revising all my flashcards are already made and everything's all organized for me so I can just get cracking on actually memorizing the content and again if there's any concepts that you really don't understand trying to get your head around them and spending the time watching videos or doing extra reading outside of revision season makes it so much easier when you get there because trust me your main focus and stress is going to be actually getting that amount of content into your brain have loads of things that you actually don't understand before you can start memorizing them because you need to understand the concepts before you start memorizing and learning details and lastly but probably most importantly is please 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 try not to get too over Overwhelmed. Now I'm being the biggest hypocrite here because pretty much every exam season I've done I've had at least a couple of full-blown meltdowns however it is honestly the biggest waste of energy it is so draining and actually really detrimental in how you do in the exams because there is no point panicking everyone is going to feel in the same boat and that's why I say start early so you don't end up feeling like there is just too much to revise but really remember to make sure you're still taking good breaks to doing things that you enjoy because it is a really tough time and I always feel like I'm not going to be able to do it but you are if you are clever enough to get into medical school you are more than clever enough to pass these exams and if you just take it a little step at a time you will be ready so those are all of the questions that I'm going to answer today I really hope you found it helpful and if you did it would mean the world if you gave it a big thumbs up and also click that little subscribe button and supported my channel and I hope you'll have an amazing rest of your week and I'll see you all so soon. Bye!